welcome to Philo for Thoughts Empowerment Summit. Today is our last day of the recordings, and with me today is Beth Sostrom, who is a, a Greek and French and, uh, say it again, Swedish, uh, business owner based out on Shelter Island, Long Island, New York. So if you recall, in August, when we did our empowerment um, podcast, we were talking from basically outside of her bed and breakfast. And then also we're going to continue that today with the uh, topic of empowerment through rest and relaxation. And then after that, to get into the story of Beth herself and what empowered her to create this um, this concept of bed and breakfast, because what she's created there at um, Seven on Shelter is really beyond what traditionally uh, people see when they go for a bed and breakfast which it Beth I have to tell you again brava it's really really fabulous what you've done <laughs> thank you thank you Christina I'm very very happy to be here today talking to you and your audience um, thank you again so my name is Beth Swanstrom and I'm talking to you from the little quaint charming beautiful island called Shelter Island in Long Island, very close to the Hamptons and the wine vineyards outside of New York City. Uh, we are 90 miles from New York City, super easy to get to. And it's a little enclave. Um, and your discussion today is about self-empowerment. And I, I love that you asked this question. Um, and it's, it's obvious there is a whole movement on power of the pause right now. Everyone seems to be needing to take a pause, really taking time, whether it's just to have a conversation like I'm having one with you um, or taking time to reconnect with ourselves, uh, maybe through meditation or a nice walk in nature um, and taking time to connect with others. For example, at a bed and breakfast, a nice scenario like that. Um, so I created seven on Shelter Island. Seven is the address of our bed and breakfast, seven Stearns Point Road. So seven on Shelter Island, and it's to offer people um, an opportunity to pause. I personally found Shelter Island and came to Shelter Island uh, to do that for myself. So I find it a perfect place to empower yourself. And I was drawn to the island after years of crazy city life. I lived in Manhattan and I worked as an art dealer. I would show my art in Basel, Switzerland or Miami and New York City as well. And I worked as a personal art advisor. And along the way, I accumulated a lot of beautiful pieces for my own collection. Um, but I was drawn to this I didn't know anyone when I moved to Shelter Island. I was drawn to it by one brief visit I had had years ago and it always stayed in my mind. So when I was looking to make a change out of um, Soho, New York City, um, this is where I decided to take the pause and that was nine years ago. <laughs> so since then, you know, we've really been able to quietly uh, continue to elevate Seven on Shelter Island and one of the things that really worked for me when buying the property is being surrounded by nature. And there are so many little inlets of uh, waterways and creeks and woods to walk in. And we also have one of the most beautiful nature conservancies called the Mushomek Preserve, where you can go for walks and it's marked by Karas Country Trail markings. You can do a half a mile walk, three mile walk, nine mile walk, don't quote me on that. Um, some guests yesterday did a six mile walk. So it's just pristine, the beaches along the way. Um, and it's also a step back in time. The history of the island is just exquisite. Uh, there was a lot of oyster farming here. Um, it had its heyday um, with the golden age film stars were spending a lot of time here. They had steamships coming out from Manhattan and had big, two big gorgeous hotels. Now it's a quiet enclave just off of Sag Harbor in the Hamptons and north to us is Greenport where there are so many beautiful farm stands and wine vineyards. So there's, there's a, a lot to do here, but most importantly, relax 
And Seven on Shelter is kind of like a little life raft. It's um, entirely a new vision of hospitality that I believe centers the guest experience. I believe it's hyper-personalized, focused on the guest's experience. And you're nodding your head, so this is wonderful. Um, Christina, you did come and stay as a guest, so you had the experience firsthand. Um, yeah, so it's more than it's more than a bed and breakfast. It's definitely a hotel disguised <laughs> and it's a destination. Like you were saying earlier, it's a destination to get back to your center, to pause on the realities of daily life. Um, and I, I received a beautiful review yesterday on um, TripAdvisor from guests that were just here this week. I'm not one to typically tote myself uh, or the business. I like to take what other people say. Could I read a little bit of the You should, because if it's review? better than my review, I want to hear it because I, I was so- I <laughs> Yours was amazing too. Sure. I haven't been able to stop talking about it since I went there. I've just been telling people about Seven so much. And it's funny that you mentioned just now that um, you went there and you didn't know anybody because now everybody on the island seems to know you because when I when they would ask you they're pouring a coffee for you or something because we went out to um we went for a walk across the uh the beach and out to the big hotel what's that big one that they renovated the Sunset Beach Hotel or the Pridwin Hotel or the, the, Pridwin, the Pridwin the Pridwin okay so we went there and they they the girl was pouring coffee for us and she said oh where are you staying and I said seven on shelter they said oh that's place and we went to Maria's for dinner one night and they said where are you staying and we said seven oh yes Maria's place and so everybody uh, uh Beth's place and so everybody was like oh yes it's Beth's place and it, <laughs> it really is it has this this feeling that I love so much about it which is uh it feels like you've opened your home to us meanwhile you and your team are so professional you're welcoming on the one hand as though we are you really embodied that concept the Greek concept of philotimo to like invite people into your home and make the space very homey and and comfortable for everyone but at the same time the aesthetic is so relaxing and lovely no wonder because you have that background in art which i was so curious even then during the retreat half of my mind was like oh i have to interview you but um i think you saw i needed more of the retreat part <laughs> <laughs> yeah good like oh my gosh i have to interview you because your energy also is fabulous and um, your team was so was so on point with everything. And uh, I know even though I think that rainy that morning rainy thing was going on, because um, it was the it was the end of August, and we were preparing, I guess, for the big rains that were coming up. But you guys handled it so easily and made everything look so fluid and everything. Just the time around the pool, if it was too much to be in the pool, was fantastic just watching the sunset I seriously have not been able to watch a sunset that way since I was a little girl um it was oh. magic it was magic thank you um thank you so much um yeah uh but tell us this review now yeah. tell us this uh other yeah one. it was a little overcast this morning and I put little candles on throughout the B&B &B, you know and the little music put a different you know playlist and those small details, for me, it makes me comfortable. So I want everyone to be comfortable and it seems to work. Thank you, Christina. Okay, I'll quickly read this, uh, this, this beautiful um, review. Um, this woman writes, I booked a three night stay at seven as a surprise for my husband to celebrate our wedding anniversary. I didn't know what to expect never having stayed at a bed and breakfast before. Upon arrival, we were pleased to see a beautifully and tastefully restored, charming farmhouse. As soon as we walked inside, we felt both calm and excited at the same time, like a big hug from a dear friend. The decor is the perfect combination of cozy farmhouse and minimalist contemporary, creating an ambiance that it at once is tranquil, replenishing, and energizing. The rooms and outdoor spaces are modern and immaculately clean. 
The innkeeper Beth and our staff's attention to detail is evident throughout the property, as is their desire to ensure each guest's comfort. Soft, fluffy towels and plenty of them, and bedding, beautiful bathrooms, invigorating showers, incredibly comfortable outdoor chaises, tilting umbrellas, plenty of books and games, and bicycles. European style breakfast buffet with fresh eggs, delicious jams and spreads, fresh produce, and freshly baked bread and chocolate croissants as flaky and delicious as any I've had in Paris, and so much more. Don't worry, I'm almost finished. This is the last paragraph. Uh, Beth is a lovely, considerate host who seemed to quietly and effortlessly anticipate all our needs, all the while giving us all the privacy we could want. Our stay was short, but we left feeling renewed and refreshed, ready to return to the real life, happy to have made new friends, and looking forward to so much more. Uh, I can't just find the rest of it. Oops. But I guess looking forward to return. Yeah, happy to have made new friends and looking forward to returning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Another great review. I I'm not sure how I didn't know about you when you first opened because it's really it's it, it was such a nice surprise and um I remember typing in I was looking Long Island and and trying to find spaces in Long Island because we used to have an event at one place that. Uh, changed ownership and unfortunately because of that they weren't the same you know mm -hmm. um and there was you know we would have had access to a beach and everything but you know the the rules had also changed post covid and the rules had also changed post uh uh i forget which of the storms that they had to redo the whole beach and everything like that right right sandy mm -hmm. yeah sandy yes and so um we were looking for something a little bit new and maybe something that was a little bit more uh, private as well without so many people kind of pressing in on you all the time. Uh, you know, and yours was perfect. I love, can I tell you, I love the little library section that you have, that little corner with uh, the books on the history of Long Island and the people who used to go there and all this other stuff. And then another one on the French Riviera and stuff like this. And then some on different hobbies or declutter your home or like little you know things to keep us busy you know and of course the backgammon board was my favorite but that's my personal <laughs> you'll have to come back and play backgammon with me I would I love have that. to I kind of suspected I was like wait she's either Greek or she's Franco something because the, a lot of French people have backgammon boards because they've been to the Middle East so I was like okay she's either Franco something or she's Greek and you're both <laughs> 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 that's that's why but the backyard board just by itself I took a picture of it to send it to show it to my son when I got home because it just is so unique it's that bright uh mm -hmm. red white blue and very just uh uh lovely we have one but it's made uh it's a little bit more traditional uh Middle Eastern style with the wood and the seashells kind of encrusted Ooh, in yeah I'll send a photo. it's it belongs to my grandparents um so it's a it's an old one but um lovely that sounds lovely so i love that that you mix old with new that's what we do here at seven as well i have my mother's you know mira and her buffet sideboard things like that and then we have the heated swimming pool and we are one block to the beach literally five minutes down the hill and the bicycles to tour the island is that your mother's tea set, the one, the silver one with the, the pinching spoon and the... Those are my Swedish grandmothers. That's so lovely. Thank I really, you. I love that I said, oh, you're you're an antiquer or something because you love the, the, the old fashioned stuff, but it was in the middle of the very modern appliances and everything. And so I thought... Uh, there's something there, there's something here I have to I have to thank you to. for noticing yeah something very oh, no, I love that stuff yeah I yeah. grew up with that I think that's why seven is the way it is my parents we used all the crystal the aura force from Sweden um, I loved going to the Greek picnics with my mom so I love dancing and 
you know, I told you we need to have you come out. We'll do a Greek barbecue. We want to do a Greek barbecue. I just don't know what to expect this year with this crazy. Well, let's do an indoor happen. party then. <laughs> let's try for something. Let's try for something. I'm going to speak with my okay. team because it's so lovely. I would love to. It, it's so lovely that space that you have. And um, that I, I want everyone to see it. I, I would Thank love you. to host an event just so that everyone sees the space there. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more offline so we can see scheduling wise what would work. Um, but uh, is it okay if I ask a couple of questions? To... Sure, I would be happy. So mm -hmm. the first question we want to go into is to to see like the concept of reflection and and resting and as you said, pause that the pause experience to so just take the time for yourself without having you know the cell phone constantly going off or the TV or the everything you know the noise of the city, you know, because it's very, it's very noisy. I used to live actually in the city. And uh, after a while, I just moved back out to Queens because it just, it was too much. Right. Um, but what made you realize that that was going to be an important thing for you to, to create that experience of the pause, to create that experience of rest and relaxation, not just for yourself coming out of the city, but for other people this way. So as an art dealer, I was an art dealer because I loved sharing the artwork that I selected. The artists that I selected were art that I would personally have in my own home. So I only worked with about seven, eight or nine artists um, throughout my career. And it's the same way with the bed and breakfast. Um, it's only what, if I were gonna stay somewhere, this is where I would stay. Um, can you ask me the question again? What's sure, the of course. nut so of it? Basically, what we want to see is the 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 concept of rest and relaxation mm -hmm. that you're carrying forward through this project, the the mm -hmm. seven shelter project. What inspired it? Basically, what made you think, okay, this is going to be my my goal to create this rest and relaxation, this haven mm -hmm. for other people to come to. So, okay, that this is why I brought up the art. Um, I was looking for an income generating summer property. I wasn't planning to live here full time. And I looked for, but I wanted to get a building where I lived and worked. So I was looking for an art gallery where I could live upstairs or bed and breakfast space because I enjoy people and I could have a lot of wall space. Um, so I looked at both types of opportunities and ended up, I really wanted to be on Shelter Island and the home I found is one block from Sunset Beach and Crescent Beach, which is idyllic. Um, so it kind of flowed together. And my mother is French and Greek and brought me up with 100% cotton sheets, um, you know, wool or cashmere clothing, leather. I mean, we don't need too much leather these days, but beautiful glassware that was handed down from my Swedish family, the coffee pots and teapots. And you saw one of the sugar bowls that were belonged to my family that came over from Sweden. And all of these things instilled a very dear, dear place in my heart and an appreciation for quality as well as good design and aesthetic. And I obviously got the minimalist contemporary art aesthetic appeal from probably the Swedish background, not sure. I did work in a financial um, position where they had the top privately held contemporary art collection in the country at the time. And I used to give tours of the art collection. And obviously osmosis is how I ended up being, having an affinity for contemporary art. Cause I certainly didn't grow up with it. I grew up with, you know, well, Swedish is a little bit minimalist. Regardless, so that is it. It's 100% my background. Um, and it's a mix of, you know, I maintained the bed and breakfast. I kept the pine floors. I kept the original banister that was made by a family on the island um, and updated certain things that needed it. And people feel that, they sense it. They have, there's a lot of light. The home is just, you know, exquisite in that respect where, like this guest said, you, you walk in and you feel like you're getting a big hug from a dear friend. You're calm and excited at the same time. That's exactly how I felt. I hadn't met you yet. I literally had walked into the door and you feel it as soon as you walk into the door. It's just nice. You feel like a wave of, you've arrived here, put down your 
uh, bag, katsiste, you know, my grandma used to say katsiste, like, come, everybody sit down, welcome. And um, it was just so, it was so nice. I can't tell you how great it was to just have that experience because you know how New York City is. It's a, a mile a minute. Everything is duck, 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 too fast, too fast. And even when you're home, you're not really resting because you're continuing work that you have to catch up with or that you need for tomorrow or something, right? Mm -hmm, and, right. Especially teachers. Teachers are the unsung heroes of that problem. And it was funny <laughs> because I got there and almost everyone there that weekend was either a retired teacher or a retired educator or something like that. It was really funny. I looked because I hadn't planned on seeing all of this. Mm -hmm. um, and it was nice. And even the the person who came with me, she also is uh she she's transitioned from one administrative job to another administrative job in education. And um it, it's a lot. You know, people don't recognize how much effort goes into the summer months when we're supposed to be on vacation, but really we're preparing for the following school term. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to find that that space. Um mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot of pressure from above, from administration, board of education, places that people don't really see how dense the behind the scenes situation really is. Um, so I, I can't tell you how much, how many times I've talked about you, how much I appreciate that. Even though it was three days, it was exactly what was needed before the full thrust of the fall semester started for us. Um, Fantastic, great, yeah. yeah. Um, and you didn't even meet me initially. I had Same with this guest that wrote this review. I wasn't there when they we have self check in. Yes, yes. So I I saw that, but you were so good with me beforehand because you exchanged texts with me, the two million texts, which I still apologize for. <laughs> um, but because I I I like precision before I get to a place, and as I said as I said before we came online for the for the podcast my first experience of a bed and breakfast was definitely not what we got at seven my right. breakfast experience of a bed and breakfast was on my honeymoon over 20 years ago and it was one room and the person just kind of shoved a, tr a breakfast tray at our door <laughs> and that was the only time you saw her when you checked in and you saw her when you checked out and she was kind of like a yeah yeah she was like a little granny kind of like hi how are you dear and you could tell she opened her house because either she needed the income or she was lonely or something you know and she was very sweet it's no reflection on this lady because she was very sweet to us and the facility was very clean but that's all I can say about it <laughs> that's all. the facility was clean and she served us breakfast and she was kind you know that's it we got our key on time and we gave our key on time and that's that experience of that bed and breakfast. So when I saw bed and breakfast, and then I saw all the photos, I was like, okay, can you please tell me? And so that's why I sent you so many texts. I was like, um, do you have this? Is there going to be this? Is the pool on the premises or do we have to walk to it? Like, I didn't know that I was gonna come walk into heaven for three days and then walk back to the city. You Thank know? you. What yeah. a high compliment. Thank you. It was it was so perfect. Um, Great. So for the audience, because I don't think that I mentioned it in the initial podcast that I did in August, um, we got a, set, a second floor uh, room, which then had a little terrace so that in the morning time, if you wanted, you could go sit on the terrace, watch the sunrise, which was great. But I was so obsessed with the pool area because it was just you know the greek thing and the pools and the water and so i just okay i would make a very early tea and sit down and um and go also i didn't want to creak around the room when i ha i was sharing the room with uh, another person so i wanted to make sure that i left that person to sleep uh, as they wanted and then i came downstairs towards the pool and it was super quiet i had my cup of tea i I never photographed my breakfast. I had that little breakfast tray that you have, the blue one. And I put my little <laughs> breakfast like that on the thing, my cafe, perfect with the perfect tasso that you have there. And um, and I just took pictures of everything. The sunshine coming up across over the pool, the sunshine coming up over that half of the um of the facility that has the lounge chairs with the hats in it. it it's like- uh -huh. Yeah, the pool cabana. Mm -hmm. It's so lovely. 
it was just no. so lovely. I can't, that moment by itself was worth the vacation. It was worth the, the, <laughs> the it was worth it. It was worth the ferry. It was worth every moment just to sit and have that five minutes to breathe. Right. Good, good. And the ferry is so easy. It's yes, easy. it is. But if I talk to you from my apartment today where the veranda is blocked for construction requiring uh, some kind of coding for the city and I'm looking at you and it's cloudy and all I see is the traffic and the fire station and, you know, over oh. there, my pile of work is over here. We need to have you come out very soon. Oh, yes. No, I'm planning. I'm I planning. think so. Yes. Um, okay. Bring your friends. I will. Oh, I'm bringing my son time. next time because he's never experienced this kind of thing. So Who? I, my son. Okay, wonderful. Gonna, but he gets his own room because he takes too long in the shower. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, what was I going to say? Okay, so then the next thing is, so you you kind of explained already uh, why you transitioned but to, to Shelter Island, but I would like to see a little more, like what did the space look like when you got it? Did it look like this? Did you have to do a lot of makeover? So yes. the interior and exterior. Can you tell us a little yeah. more about it? Um, I, re I, uh, when I bought the home, it had a dirt floor in the basement because it was moved here in the 1940s from one mile away. They brought it up over the golf course. Um, yeah, it was an annex to another hotel that oh, had the, yeah, the other hotel had burnt down. So awesome. this building was bought by the neighbor who has a lovely hotel next door and uh, moved over here and worked in tandem with the hotel next door. Um, it had 18 rooms. Oh, it wow. used to have a restaurant on the second floor. Anyway, when I purchased it, in, in uh, when another woman purchased it in the 1980s and she took it from the 18 rooms to seven rooms um, it's a nice number, seven Stones Point Road, but we only rent five guest rooms. That's why I can have you come stay with me as my friends and family. Um, and I redid the bathrooms. There were small pedestal tubs in there, very pretty. Um, we donated them somewhere and we also redid the kitchen. And um, then Seven years later, we put the swimming pool in and I built another addition for myself and my mom and my dog to live in. So we're right on premises. Uh, it's one structure connected with a grand hallway and um, it works beautifully. I remember Peaches. So Peaches, the big thing about Peaches is that she ended up getting more attention than anyone else at the, the, at the goodbyes when we were saying our Greek goodbyes, right? The like two million goodbyes. And everybody's like, where's Peaches? We want to say goodbye to Peaches. Where's Peaches? Oh, she and she's crazy. adjusted nicely. Yeah, she was getting her photo taken. <laughs> yeah, she's MVP. She's definitely MVP. I'm not sure like how most valuable pet. Um, well, that's sweet. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm really happy. It's been about nine weeks since we adopted her and she's doing great. Uh, oh, she's only been on the premises for nine weeks. Yeah, she. I had just gotten her when you got there. She's so perfect. I, so in Thank the you. morning to share, she has this routine that she was doing every morning where she would come out of the area where you where you live and she would come out, do a round, uh, she would do a walk around the pool. Like she's doing rounds, checking, double checking that everyone has done what they have to do. And then <laughs> she would go inside to that little couch that you ended up putting, I think a, a cloth or a towel or something mm -hmm. for to, to lounge on. But it was so sweet. Like there's like a there's a nobility to to peaches that is so fun and and lovely. It reminds me a little bit of one of um the dogs that my mom had growing up that she always talked about and she would always say, Oh, Gug, Gug, and that was the name of the dog. Yes. This giant German shepherd, retired police dog, and all this, you know. Um, but Peaches was lovely because it kind of reminded me of these stories that I grew up with of like how a family dog is and just kind of watches over and I say yeah she is she's watching over she's checking the place out making sure Beth is okay <laughs> <laughs> yes and for everyone listening Peaches is a Weimaraner she's a beautiful Weimaraner silver colored mm. thank um, you so then 
aesthetically, did you have, when you were doing the, the making the changes, the kitchen is gorgeous. I can't even, it's a dream kitchen. I don't even know if uh, Rachel Ray or these level people have a kitchen like this. This is a gorgeous makeover kitchen. And you could tell everything is modernized in terms of the cabinetry and the, the, um, the fridge and all of the, the accommodations there. Uh, but then what caught my eye the most was the little tea set and the sugar bowl. And even though I never use sugar because now I'm older and we, we can't use sugar, I admired it because I said, oh my gosh, I love this because it reminded me of stuff that my grandparents used to have. And I looked, I was like, this is great. Um, so I'm glad that you shared that it was antique, that you're, that you're sharing with us. It's kind of a gift for us also to see that you're open to sharing that kind of things, even if you're just laying it out you know, for even if no one uses it directly, but I think a couple of guests ended up using the the sugar and stuff instead of the packets because it's it's nicer to have that. It's nicer to have that kind of homey feel to everything. Um, but what was the question? I I've been doing this the past couple of days. I meander and then ask a question. <laughs> but um, the question would be: while you were doing all these renovations and stuff, did you feel kind of a cathartic? Uh improvement to yourself was it relaxing to you to kind of see something as it was building into seven on shelter yes organizing has always made me um calm so organizing or baking um is very therapeutic for me having a dinner party having a gathering is what i love and it's very calming and that's my version of a pause entertaining and um you know just getting everything perfect it's tough being a perfectionist but um when it comes to seven i'm definitely trying to be a perfectionist um You're and that works for me <laughs> if it's not perfect I'm, i would never i never would have people stay here if it wasn't something i would i would where i would stay you're doing it and you have the bikes in the back and you have the little gym if someone wants to do the rowing machines. Which yeah, we have a gym, we have the Peloton. And I need to tell you, David Griffin is the architect designer that worked with me both on the initial restoration of the bathrooms and the kitchen. I wanted a white kitchen, he wanted a black kitchen. So he met me in the middle, it's black and white. And um, with this ad addition we added in the swimming pool, we also added an outdoor propane fire pit, an indoor propane fireplace, which you'll see when you come in the fall, oh, and nice. I have a wood burning fireplace in my home. So it's really warm and co warmer and cozier here. Oh, nice, very good. Yeah. And you have this really large um, backyard area that I didn't get the chance to really sit in because I was too I was too obsessed with captivated by the swimming pool right I was too yeah. obsessed with other, it. other guests have told me they feel like they're in Palm Springs in the backyard with the pool it really is or really it, it reminded me a little bit more um like the south of France or when I went to Greece the last couple of times and the resorts all had everything kind of spread out how you, the lounge mm -hmm. chairs with the that that sort of matching umbrella and everything and everything was just so well coordinated and well adjusted. It really does bring you to not really modern Europe, but like that sort of transitional period of like from the fifties. Mm -hmm. So everything is classic and things are coming back to that style now, um, post COVID, post everything, like that style is being uh, appreciated very much right now because everyone wants to take a pause I guess from the pause because there was such a mental health crisis that developed because of COVID that now that we're outside we want to have space to ourselves but we also want things that when we look at them visually the register is calming right mm -hmm. and so walking into seven I'll tell you the the most calming uh thing is to look and see even though you have artwork on the walls it matches it, there's like a story being told in each room and every room has its own story and it comes together really nicely and it, there's clear glass so that you don't feel encumbered by so many uh tchotchkes in one space there's as you said before a lot of light coming in so you feel everything is clean and and lovely the um that area that has that big dark dining room table mm -hmm. the lounge uh, the lounge yeah table. it's a marcel wanders table yes. it's stunning northern dutch designer that is a perfect thing because 
the room has a lot in it, but also the table just kind of identifies and brings the whole room together by itself. It's like, it just it's nice. You walk in and everything's kind of like uh, <laughs> game. This game, I don't know what it was called. I don't remember what it was called. Uh, I was like five or six, and it was a magnets game. And you would watch all the colorful magnets kind of come together into whatever shape that the thing was designing. And so it reminded me of the magnets game. I don't know how else to say it, right? It okay. Me of yeah. Home and beach and Greece. And I just felt the same thing. I'll tell you what I felt. I felt the same thing that I felt when I stepped off the plane onto Athens ground for the first time as an adult. And I felt like my heart came together like a puzzle. Wow. That's, That's so it. lovely. Thank you. I'm so yeah. happy. So I'm glad. And it's funny because my friend who came with us was uh, very similar. Like she, she's very similar in needing the step away. And she was very similar in certain like uh, things that she wanted to do, like get back to nature, walk around the golf course and do all this other stuff. And yet she had the same reaction, which is funny because that's never the reaction that I've seen her had. We've mm -hmm. on different for for different um occasions and <clears throat> usually professional things and so we've always been kind of following a certain thing so this is the first time that I've seen her in a more vacation mode kind of thing okay and it was funny to see her reaction I was like wow <laughs> great great uh, yeah um it took some time though I think it was day three that she got it me, me it was day one the first second I looked at it and it was I just saw it. I think actually when I finally met you the first thing out of my mouth was this place was this place is fabulous I can't uh, and the second yeah. thing out of my mouth was I want to interview you about this place <laughs> I know you did ask me right away yeah so all right, all right. Um, is there anything that you could advice because I'm sure there's challenges to doing this every day and and year round is there any challenge that you'd like to ch uh, share with people who maybe have a similar vision for themselves um like how to make a small business work or maybe a challenge about being a woman in the industry um I think the biggest challenge is uh finding um incredible reliable help that are as passionate about the guest experience as I am. So keeping the place immaculate and sticking to the structure that we've put into place, a structure that works and we continue and guests come back often. We have so many repeat guests and they want it exactly the way it was left. A little tweak here and there design wise, because I'm always modifying things, but um, yeah. So finding really good quality people to work here. And we've found that, so we're lucky. Yeah, you're very blessed in terms of your team. I find that the it, it's like the whole place is a signature Beth moment. And it's funny because it's hard to do when there's, a, you have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm really terrible with names. Your colleague who, um, who did one of the breakfasts towards the end and she's also retired from education. Shannon. Jan, uh, Shannon, Shannon. Shannon, yes. So it's really hard to find somebody like Shannon who then it's hard to tell which things you did and which things she did because they're the same. So obviously you work well together and you're a good match with each other. But we had a request because we had to have two people in our room. And so that was a, that was a, a challenge. And my first thing was, I'll just take the couch, but you made it, you, you had somebody come in last minute and like fix the entire room so that it would accommodate two people which was you know so quick I I've never seen anyone do that like this and it wasn't you running around and you weren't like you know chasing things down or to to make them you had your team and they were just quietly doing everything and it just maintained this level of perfection that I've not seen even in the big hotels even in the big name hotels it's it's magic Wow. Thank you, Christina. Good. Good. Great. Um, okay. So would you, is there any closing thought that you want to leave our uh, viewers with? 
I love I love that you mentioned about the Greek phrases you used about welcoming and come on in and feel at home. So this obviously is my Greek heritage coming through here at seven, which I wasn't really aware of. A hundred percent. Are you kidding? You feel okay. It's like pulsating across the entire place. Okay. Yeah. So let's do some, let's have some fun um, yes. and like do Greek cooking class followed by a dinner. Um, we have a lot of retreats here if you want to do a retreat, but I want you to personally come out, bring your son, bring some more friends. And, you know, this fall, it's a lot quieter in November. So I can do things like this. Oh, okay. So we're definitely okay. going to coordinate something. Uh, I'm yeah. going to talk to my team and see what, because uh, everybody's younger in on the team and they're just starting out new jobs. Themselves. That's okay. As long as you're coming, we'll have fun. I know. Yes, I'm looking yeah. for All right. So I'm going to sign off for today, everybody, and we'll continue this. Uh, I hope that everyone will be able to come to uh, Philo for Thoughts event at Kelari Taberna on the 14th. And also when Beth and I coordinate our uh, Greek experience at Seven on Shelter. We hope that you'll join us there as well. The announcements will be coming soon. All right. Wonderful. Thank you.